Today we're going to look at very briefly, in honor of my mother, the Mit Areni Kaporas Mishkova. We're going to look at the mitzvah of honoring parents. Now, just glancing at it, we're all familiar with this, that Kabe Davicha Vesimecha is number five. Now, we all know that the Aseres Adibris, oh, yeah. man of your word. Okay, should be another paper? No? Is there another one? Ronnie. Yeah. Oh. So today's question basically is as follows. The Ten Commandments, which is this week's Parsha, so they were given on two tablets. So if you look at the two, at the two of them, what do you notice? The first, certainly four, a man between man and God. Consistent. I am Hashem, your God. Number one, number two, the prohibition of idolatry. Number three, not to use Hashem's name in vain. Number four, to remember Shabbos, Hashem created the world. Let's skip number five for a second, because that's our question. Honor your father and mother is number five. Now, the, the remaining five, as you can see in the text, those in the second stone focus on interpersonal issues between man and man. Not to murder, adultery, steal, because she means kidnap. Not to testify against your fellow, not to covet. Um, that which belongs to your fellow. So the question is, only your parents. Why is that in the first group? Surely that's between man and man. Clear? That's a simple question. That's your, your parents brought you into the world. They, you, you, uh, no human being can survive without the parents looking after them. The mother certainly from birth. We are born entirely helpless. We are fed, clothed, and so on. So surely that is a number one interpersonal. So what is it doing on the first luach, the first tablet, where all of the other commandments between man and God? So one of the answers is as follows. Let's look at the bottom below that. It's from the Gemara in Kedushin. And the Gemara says as follows. Before I give that, here's a classic answer. Because there are three partners in the creation of a, of a person. Mother and father, but that produces the physical body. To be alive is the soul. So if you are honoring parents and you're honoring your existence, you've got to acknowledge also Hashem's role. So it leads directly to honoring or acknowledging God's role because that's the soul that's placed in you. That's a classic answer to why that belongs in number in the first tablet. Here's another one, and then a third one. So look at below, Kedushin Lamed Aleph. Let's read the Gemara inside. Dorash Ula Rabba Apischad Benesia. So Ula expounded a great teaching standing on the opening of the yeshiva, or the opening of the house of the, of the Nasi. Briefly, What's the meaning of the verse? All the kings of the world will acknowledge you. For they heard the words of your mouth. And they talking about God. God, the world will acknowledge you. The kings will acknowledge you because they heard the words of your mouth. Says Ulla, doesn't say the word in the singular. The words. Why is it not enough to hear God's word? Why must they hear God's words in the plural in order to acknowledge God? Question? That's the question. Why the plural, not the singular? Again, the verse says, all the nations of the world will acknowledge you for they have heard the words of your mouth. If they hear even one word from you, they'll acknowledge you. Not yet two words. What's the plural? He answered, Baruch the nation of the world said like this, when they heard the first of the Ten Commandments, God said, I am the only God, you should have no other gods before me. Amru the nation of the world said, ah, he's only seeking his own honor. No other gods, only me. Even Shoma, then when they continued to listen, they heard that God said, God is saying, don't just honor me, but honor parents as well. Ah, so God is not seeking only his own glory. They went back and now believed in and accepted the first commandment. And that's the meaning of the verse. 
They heard your words. The first word they heard, ah, he just wants himself. They heard the second commandment, honor parents. So now this is a God we can relate to. He's not egotistical. He's also calling for honor for parents. So we can therefore acknowledge him. So this gives us an answer. How honoring parents abets and supports, I am God your Lord. Because I am God your Lord alone. The nations of the world were resistant. But when they hear that God is saying, honor parents, okay, we'll accept the first one as well. So that is another answer why honoring parents appears in the first tablet. Because why? Because it actually contributes to the belief in Hashem when the nations of the world see that God is not simply seeking his own glory, but commands us also to honor parents. Okay, so that's another answer. Clear? So the fifth one strengthens the belief and allows them to believe in the first. Now to go a little bit deeper. Why the, second, the honoring parents belongs in the first set of tablets? And that's quite simply, friends, because there is nothing in life that's more expressive of Hashem than birth. It is the closest thing to creating something out of nothing. We take it for granted, but it is, is stupendous. A human being, a living human being is born from nothing. A drop, a sperm, which starts off with the mind's being activated, the whole process continues to astound. And from this comes a living creature. In creation of a child, and by that matter, all human beings, and therefore, because the human being is the center and vortex of all creation, even animals can do it, but it's really all a reflection because human being is a microcosm of the universe. So what exists within us is reflected in all of creation. But the miracle is still as, as, as great virtually creation out of nothing so in other words here's the point bam is god's creating everything everything all the time but it's not obvious it's not obvious you don't see hashem just looking at the world you've got to discover where it comes from creation not easy but with a person with open eyes to look he's a child being born and that's the direct place to see there is a god so that's the explanation here that in every parent every human being is, is the power of the divine to create a human, living human being virtually out of nothing. So it's a divine, transparently divine power. That's the reason that only your parents belongs in the first, the first of the commandments because of all of the events in life. Life itself is transparently divine. You cannot objectively look and say, how did I come into the world and not see a God? So thinking about your parents, how did they produce this? In them is Hashem working through them. So that's the answer to why it belongs in the first category. Which means, therefore, that that's why, just to mention, it doesn't say love your parents, mind you. You have to love your parents. If they're lovable, you love them. If they're not lovable, you don't love them. That's not the commandment. The commandment is respect and honor. The fact is, they were the ones through which you came into the world and this divine miracle of your existence came. No matter what they're like, they've got to be treated with respect. You've got to put them in jail, maybe, but do it respectfully. I mean this seriously. It's a fascinating thing. In halacha, there's some, many, sometimes, let us thank God we don't have this, but there's the death penalty. For certain sins, if you look at the details, even if the person is put to death, it's got to be done respecting the divine image. It's a human being. It was produced through a divine act that has a soul. How much more so? Parents. You have to respect parents. If they're lovable, you love them, and hopefully that's the case. But even if not, you came into the world through them, invested in them, is Hashem's direct power of creation. You owe your life, you respect. That's an aside. Now we're going to go a little bit further into this idea of respect as it applies not only to parents, but to every human being. Parents, it's the most, because you owe your life to them. But as we all know, we have to respect every human being. And I'm, I'm also sharing this because one of my mother's great qualities um, that 
we saw and that I'm hearing over and over again was the incredible respect that she gave every person that she encountered. Just to an example, just a phone call yesterday from the Shliach here in um, in in uh, not in not in Saint Sever, no, where is he in uh, Hudson? Shliach in Hudson. His name is uh, uh, Noch Lepkowski. So he calls me, he tells me, I was in Australia once for a wedding, a family wedding, and we stayed in your parents' home. My home, my parents' home was open and people were staying there. When, when they weren't there, the house was, here's the key, stay. And even when they were there, you know, I was just a, I was just a bocher, just a student, came for a, a cousin's, I don't know, a wedding. Your mother served me like royalty. Like, well, this was every person that crossed the threshold. And not just crossed the threshold that she met. She was royalty, and she treated everybody else like royalty. So this is a teaching now we're going to, to convey in that sense. Look at the left-hand column at the bottom. So Tari here is talking about the ramp that led up to the Mizbeach. You shall not ascend with steps upon my altar so that your nakedness shall not be exposed upon it. So we're talking about the big Mizbeach that was 10 cubits high. It's about as high as the ceiling. So how, and, and the offerings by the Koyanim were offered on top of the altar. How did they get there? So you would expect a series of steps. And there are steps throughout the base of Migdash complex. But not here. There's a long ramp. 32 cubits long. That's how long it was. Why? Because when you take steps, let's look into Rashi. Look at Rashi, the seven commentary. Or the beginning. You should not ascend with steps. When you build a ramp for the altar, do not make it with steps. And Rashi says that uh, the, the French word for, for uh, steps in Old French Echelon, okay? But it must be smooth and slanting. Why? The Torah said, continue the next quote in the bold, so that the naked, your nakedness shall not be exposed. What does this mean? Because due to the steps, you must widen your stride, right? You take a step, you got to lift your foot. And that's exposing the nakedness. We're talking about you know, the, the nakedness of a person. Here's uh, the private parts of a person. And Ashi says, Although it would not be actual exposure of nakedness because it is written and make them linen pants. The Koenim wore trousers. By the way, this is not so common in those days. People didn't wear trousers. They didn't wear underpants. They just wore a long, uh, like a long, a long uh, frock, which they tied at the waist. The Torah says, the four garments an ordinary Koen had to wear, four garments, a long tunic, a sash, a belt, Trousers and a hat. Okay, God will wear another four garments. So it's not actual nakedness because he's wearing pants still. Nevertheless, continues Rashi, widening the strides is close to exposing the nakedness of the one ascending the steps. And you behave towards them, the stones, in a humiliating manner, exposing yourself. Not really, but it kind of looks like it because... So we want to avoid that, says the Torah, that's forbidden. Now Rashi includes. Now these matters are a kal v'chayim. A kal means, means like this. Kal means light, chayim means strict. If a law applies to a light case, how much more so to a serious case. So what's the point here? A fortio, which is Latin for this kind of reasoning conclusion. What's the, uh, what's the reasoning? That if concerning these stones, which have no intelligence to object to the humiliation, the stones, the Torah said, that because they are necessary, you should not behave towards them in a humiliating manner. How much more so in contrast, your friend, who is created in the likeness of the creator, and who does object to being humiliated, how much more so you must be careful not to embarrass it. Yeah, beautiful lesson. If the Torah says, don't embarrass stones, how much more so not your fellow? Now, I want to analyze this, Rashi. Two little questions and a very beautiful insight. Powerful, powerful. Before that, I want to share with you this 
kind of mitzvah we also have in other areas in life. Tonight, for example, by your Shabbos table. Your challah is covered. Why is the challah covered? There's several reasons. One is the challah reminds us of the manna. Why do we have two breads? Because the manna fell every day, enough for that day. But on Friday, a double portion, Lechem Mishnah fell for Friday and Shabbos. So to recall the manna, we have two breads. And we put it on a plate or a board, and then we cover it because the Torah says the manna fell, layer of dew, two portions, layer of dew, sealing it in fresh. That's one reason. Why are we recalling the manna? Thousands of years ago, why? Very powerful message. A Jew sits down Friday night to this. He has to remember it's all a gift. It's all money from heaven. I worked. It's all true. And I'm an intelligent fellow. And I did the good deal. But everybody knows it's all in the I just make the vessel. It's every Friday night as we enjoy the fruits of our labor. We're not working now. Now's the time to enjoy it. Family, friends at a beautiful Shabbos table. We're reminded looking at our challah. It's manna from heaven. Except it just went through the channels of nature, but nothing changed. In the desert, it was obvious. Now it's not so obvious, but it's the same truth. It's manna from heaven. And then, by the way, he says, Eishas Chayel. And another, it's all gratitude. He turns to his wife and says, this whole, my children, my table, it's all thanks to you. That's one reason why we have the two breads and it's covered. Now, another reason, germane to our discussion. In halacha, when you sit down to a meal, there's literally a pecking order. What foods you eat first? Because some foods have more chashivas, have more significance than others. Where do we derive that from? It's derived from the seven species the land of Israel is blessed with. The first one, the term mentions, is grain. Number one, chita. It's the staple of life. So normally if you sit down to a meal and you have wine and bread, a regular meal. First you make a bracha on the wash and your bread, and then wine comes next. It's also high up there, but first is bread. So normally you should be, you should be eating the bread first, the challah. But Shabbos is different since we have a special mitzvah to declare this kiddush, which means a declaration of the sanctity of the day and the acknowledge, acknowledgement of it. And that should be done over wine because it's a joyous occasion. And because we're ignoring the challah, we come. You cover it. It's like the same idea. The challah is like saying, well, hey, me first. Cover the challah so that we, it's not seen because we're ignoring it when we make Kiddush on the wine. So it's a similar sentiment. That's a similar sentiment here that the Koyan has to walk up, not with steps, not to embarrass the stones. Now, here's two questions. Not to embarrass your fellow is a very obvious thing. Do we need to have a whole teaching to learn it from the stones of the way the Koyan dresses? It's such a basic teaching. That's the first thing. Secondly, listen, there's a detail in Rashi that seems to be irrelevant. Look at how Rashi um, spells out the message. Now, the, how, how, what's the reasoning? If these stones have no intelligence to object to the humiliation, the Torah said respect them, and the Torah adds, because they are necessary. Well, what does Rashi add those words? The Torah says, respect the stones. Stop there. Was he adding because they are necessary? And then at the end of the argument, he says, your friend who is created in the likeness of your creator and who does object to being humiliated, how much more say so must be careful not to embarrass him. <clears throat> Here too, what does he have to say the words? Created in the likeness of a creator, just your friend and much more so a human being, you should. So here's the, here's, here's the answer, your friends. Beautiful insight. What we're talking about here is a case where your friend doesn't know he's being embarrassed. He, did, he doesn't get it, and that even the people around him don't get it. But you are making fun of him. So here's what the Torah is saying. When the Torah says, don't embarrass the stones because they're necessary. What does the Torah say? A Kohen who's going to walk up the steps, right? he's using it. It's the Kohen that's going to be insulted. Your friend who's made in the image of God, it's Hashem that's going to be insulted. 
That's what Rashi's pointing to. Rashi's pointing to, he's made in the image of Hashem. He himself is not getting, but insulted, doesn't realize, you know, where, you know, it was really making fun of him. The people around lost on them. But Hashem looking at this and says, this is my idola. This is my creation. You've insulted. I'm insulted. That's what Rashi is saying here. So we're not talking about the obvious insult. You don't need this whole teaching. We know that you can't embarrass your friend. You don't need to have a whole, a whole uh, model and explanation. The model here is the steps are not humiliated. They don't know who's being humiliated because they're being used. A client watching this, so he sees, you know, you're walking up and it's not, it's somebody else looking at the stones that is seeing this. Maybe this is not, this is not nice. That's the model here. There's somebody else. The model here is Hashem, in the case of the person watching this conversation and saying, you hurt me. That's the big news here. An incredible, so it's a new level of respect. Again, inspired by my mother. It's not only the person should walk away feeling in your encounter, you know, that you, everything is fine. It's even if I'm saying something that I'm making fun of. Nobody got it but me. Hashem is saying, I'm watching this. I'm insulted. Beautiful, incredible lesson that we're taught from here. Again, we see from here. The point is, because these stones have a use, so we're shifting our attention off from the stone, they don't get it. But it's someone else looking at this. Don't do it. Your, your fellow human being, he's made in God's image. Hashem is actually saying, not him. He's not getting, look at the author. That's the problem. Look at the creator. Okay. So a message in how, how sensitive we need to be to our, and respectful of our fellow human being. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Good job.